Hello and welcome to episode 33 of Zero to Hero. Yes, welcome back to episode 33 of Zero to Hero. I'm Wes, and in today's episode, we'll be taking on Wickham Wanderers and Stevenage in League Two. Now, since you were last with me, I was hoping we was going to have, uh, I was going to be able to tell you we're back in the automatic promotion spots, but unfortunately, not. Last time you saw us, we beat Oldham, who were top of the table and still are top of the table. We beat them 3 1 at home, and then we lost 3 1 to our local rivals, Leighton Orient, away from home. Now we managed to follow that up with a two-all draw away from home against Cambridge. Andy Lacey and Amadou Bart with both uh, with those two goals for us. We then beat Doncaster 3-1 away from home. Two goals from Nathan Cottrell and one from Andy Lacey meant we took all three points home with us. We also managed to survive Dean Moore getting sent off yet again in the 76th minute. And Nathan Cottrell, who hasn't featured very heavily for us in the first team, he has been struggling to find form. And then Barr got injured during the Cambridge game, so we brought him in. And he scored two fantastic goals, which meant he kept his place for the next game, which means he actually did score. Again, we beat Barnett 2-1 at home. Goals from Andy Lacey and Nathan Cottrell in that game. And then we couldn't keep that run going and we lost 3-0 at home to Scunthorpe. Nobody played very well at all, especially the two strikers. They really didn't play well. But since then we haven't lost a game, but we haven't won one either. We managed to draw 3 all with Port Vale at home. We were 3-0 up in this game. And in the second half we just crumbled after Ellis Barkworth got himself sent off in the 43rd minute. We couldn't keep them out and we conceded the <laughs> equaliser in nine, in the second minute of stoppage time at the end of the game. We then followed that up with a 0-0 draw at Crewe. We, we defended well, didn't really threaten the goal much at all. So we, uh, <laughs> we just finished 0-0, quite a boring game really, glad it wasn't on a live comm. Then our last game against Crawley, we drew one all at home and made a bar with our only goal in that game. Again, nobody playing fantastically, all pretty average performances. So we'll be taking on Wickham in our first game away from home and then we'll be playing at home against Stevenage. Wickham and Stevenage are around about the same place in the table, 10th and 11th. So we can hope to win those two games. Wickham are favourites for the first game and we're favourites for the second game. So hopefully we can upset the odds there and get a win against Wickham as well. So as things stand, we are fourth in Skybet League 2. We're three points behind Cheltenham in third and we are nine points off of Oldham in first place. We have still got to play Oldham on the last game of the season but uh, by then it might all be academic and we just won't be anywhere near winning the league if we can get into the automatic promotion spots then that would be fantastic otherwise it's the playoffs for us and Scunthorpe are in there which we and we lost to them quite heavily uh, just recently so we don't particularly want to be getting them in the playoffs I'd prefer to go up in the automatic promotion spots but that means trying to catch Cheltenham and Lake Orient now it's now February in game, so that means we've gone through the January transfer window and there have been some transfers in, and I will go through them with you. First of all, we managed to sign Gavin McGill on a free transfer. He is a 21-year-old English striker with a two-star current ability and a four-star potential. We signed him on a free transfer. He had been, had, he'd been without a club after being released by Bournemouth at the end of last season. Hasn't made a... Uh, a debut for us yet he's gone into the under 23s we also managed to sign martel taylor crossdale on a free transfer a 22 year old english striker two star current ability three and a half star potential ability he joined on a free transfer from chelsea he's made two appearances for us and hasn't really set the world alight one of those as i believe has been as a substitute in the league so we'll be putting him into the under 23s to see how he 
does unless we get any injuries. And finally, I said to you that we was going to be looking for a new right back and we found one in the shape of Cameron Cox, 23 year old Welsh right back, two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential. We signed him for 44,000 from Cardiff, our parent club, where he hasn't made an appearance for them all season. So we're hoping to, uh, he has made a couple of appearances for us. He's played okay. I mean, let's have a look. His average rating is 6.97, so he's doing okay, better than average, I'd say. And is definitely an improvement on the player we had from Arsenal. I did try and send him back, but he uh, we never we didn't put in the terminate loan option when we took him on loan, so he is going to be with us for the rest of the season. But we're not paying him any wages, so he can just sit there and do nothing, as far as I'm concerned. Daily Campbell, that's the one. No transfers out to speak of. We did extend a couple of contracts while we were during the transfer window to uh, to manage to keep a few of the players that there was interest in. One of them was more. He had interest from Fulham and we managed to re-sign him on an extended contract. He's with us to, for the next four years. He's being paid an extra £175 a week, but most importantly, he now has a minimum release fee of £1.5 million, which is what I want. to. If, he, if he's going to go, that's what I want for him. Also, we managed to extend the contract of Humphreys. We managed to extend his contract by another year because he was in the last year of his contract and there was clubs after him and I don't want to get rid of him because he's got fantastic potential. And I'm pretty sure there was another one. It might have been Andy Lacey. Yeah, I think we, we extended the, the contract of Andy Lacey uh, and put in a minimum release fee of a million pounds for him because there was more... Um, there was interest in him as well just before the transfer window, so we made sure we tied him down. Interesting enough, Amadou Bars managed to catch Adi Ado in, in the top goal scorer stakes for us. They're level on 14 goals each. Adi Ado has been out injured. He did come back briefly, but he's out injured again only for a short time, so he won't be featuring in today's lineup. Speaking of which, the lineup going into today's game. After I've taken Adi Adoing out. Right, so this is the starting 11 for today's first match against Wickham. We've gone with Howard in goal, a back four of Walford, Humphreys, Ioma and Cox. A midfield of O'Connor, Moore and Earring. Evandro playing in just behind Barr and Lacey. On a control mentality, structured team shape with the usual team instructions. I've gone without a goalkeeper on the bench because uh, our backup keeper is injured, or he was injured, and I just haven't put him back on the bench but the likelihood of Howard getting injured is slim. But now I've said that, guaranteed he picks up an injury in the first five minutes and we have to play 85 minutes without a recognised goalkeeper. Like I said, Wickham are favourites for this game, so we need to upset the odds to get a result today and we need that result because we need to try and catch Cheltenham. Cheltenham are playing Grimsby away from home today, so hopefully Grimsby can do us a favour. Lacey with the ball early on, crosses into Barr, but Barr can't find the target. But it's an encouraging start from us, having attack, attacking threats early on. But we're defending a corner now, and we all know how bad we are at defending corners, and that's just proved my point there. We're 1-0 down 12 minutes in, and that sees us drop to fifth, which isn't good at all. Poor defending, really. We switched off after the ball got headed out and just lost the players that we were supposed to be marking. We need to get an equaliser and we need to get it soon. Evandro with the ball to Moore. O'Connor forward to Lacey, but he can't find him. But Barr picks up the loose ball, plays it to Lacey, and less than two minutes after conceding the first goal, we have equalised. It was a good ball forward from O'Connor. Well, it wasn't really a good ball forward from O'Connor. He couldn't find Lacey, but fantastic from Barr to pick up the loose ball. Played it straight to Lacey and a first-time finish from him, making his way back into the side because of injury, and he's taking his chance. Now we need to pull ahead. Barr with the ball now, but running the wrong way. Moore in midfield to Earring, trying to find Lacey, but can't. But he's got the ball back. Evandro now to Moore, trying to find Lacey again. 
I don't know why they keep trying to find Lacey when Barr is the target man, but we've still got the ball in midfield. Moore out to Walford with the cross. And Dean Moore has put us 2-1 up 19 minutes in. We was passing the ball around nicely in the midfield. Moore getting involved just outside the area. He passed it to Walford. Walford with the cross took a big deflection off their defender and Moore was there to pick it up and score his third goal for us. That puts us back up to fourth and only a point behind Leighton Orient. Cheltenham must be winning against... They are winning against uh, Grimsby at the moment and Leighton Orient must be... They're drawing against Doncaster. If Doncaster could pick... Uh, to could grab a goal, we would potentially, well we would, we'd go up into the automatic promotion spots on goal difference. don't know why we've zoomed in. Cox with the ball in defence, playing it out to Barr. Evandro now to O'Connor. Back to Barr, out to Walford. Walford with the cross, but there's nobody there. He had time, he should have took his time and found a better cross than that. But Barr with the ball again to O'Connor. To Moore, who loses out, but Evandro with the shot just wide. And as things stand, Doncaster are 1-0 up against Leighton Orient and we will go up into the automatic promotion spots on goal difference. Not only that, we're leapfrogging our local rivals to take them out of the automatic promotion spots. If we can keep it like this and if Doncaster can keep their lead, it'll be a great start to the episode. But we're defending again and we defended well. Evandro with the ball out to Barr, to Lacey, through on goal, forces a save and once again forces another save with his second shot. We've got the corner, Evandro with the corner, comes out to Earring, to O'Connor who shoots wide with a lot of power. It looks like we're going to go in at half time, 2-1 up. It's good stuff from us here, we need to uh, keep this going in the second half and grab another goal. If we can grab one more goal, then I will change up the tactic and bring it back to a, a five-man defence like I have done earlier in the season. Evandro with the ball to Walford, to Barr. O'Connor on the edge of the area, back out to Walford with the cross. Can't find anybody. Earring now with the ball to Moore, out to Cox. Evandro on the edge of the area, out to Walford. Finds the cross to Earring, and that is 3-1. 48 minutes in, another assist from Charlie Walford, having a very good game. He's proved to be a very good signing at the start of the season. He's weighed in with a lot of assists and the odd goal here and there. It was a good header from Earring, in off the bar. Nothing the keeper could have done about that. Humphrey's not having a very good game by looks of it in defence. Neither is Cox, which is worrying. Humphrey's has uh, shot up to a 6.8 though. Howard with the long ball forward to Barr. Evandro to Lacey, to Earring, Evandro again to O'Connor, forces a save out the keeper, Lacey still with it though, and he's lost out, and now Wickham can break on us, and they shoot wide. So like I say, as things stand, 32 games in, we're on 55 points, but crucially we've got a goal difference of 21 to, against Leighton Orient 16. Also, if we can win our next game and Cheltenham lose their next game, we could potentially finish this episode in second just behind Oldham that is assuming that Cheltenham keep their result against Grimsby if Grimsby can grab an equaliser that would be even better and we could start the next game in second place and try and uh, consolidate second place and close the gap on Oldham who are playing they're losing to Stevenage who we play next it's good and bad in equal measures because if Stevenage can do that to Oldham, who are top of the table. What are they going to do to us? Anyway, I'm going to make a substitution. I'm going to bring Daly Campbell on for Cox. Cox not having a very good game at the moment after I was bigging him up before the game. And what to do now? Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to drop Evandro back into the defence and take him off. He's had a good game, but I want to shore up that defence. You know what? What I could do? More. Can I'll put more back in central defence, have him play as a stopper. Then I will switch Evandro and Earring around and change Evandro to an advanced playmaker on support. And then we'll change the team instructions, we'll drop down to counter, we'll stay unstructured but we won't work the ball into the box or look, we'll, we'll not look for the overlap. 
will dribble less, will shorter passing and retain possession, will be more disciplined, use tighter marking and close down more, and will drop the tempo down to normal. We'll also sit the lines slightly deeper and we'll stick to positions. Just to try and see this game out. I know we've got quite a while left yet, but that gives me the, the option that if we do concede two goals, we can then make another change to go attacking again. Or another couple of changes, actually. We've only got less than 10 minutes to go, and predictably it's turned into a boring end to the game because I'm just trying to see it out and I don't mind it being boring if we win. For the last six minutes I'm going to bring on Taylor Crossdale for Lacey, have him play as the poacher and I'm going to bring on I'm going to bring on Barkworth for Ioma because he's knackered and we don't want tired legs at the back and that will be it for changes. All the scores have disappeared. Stevenage are now 3-1 up against Oldham. Doncaster still with a one goal lead against Wick, against whoever they were against, Lake Orient. But has that just changed? Because I'm pretty sure we dropped back down to fourth just as that game ended. Did Leighton Orient get a last-minute equaliser? Leighton Orient did. They scored an equaliser in two, two minutes into stoppage time, which means we are still in fourth place. One point behind them. But if we can beat Stevenage in our next game, I'm pretty sure we'll climb the table and go into third, back into the automatic promotion place. OK, so we're ready for our next game of the episode. We're playing at home against Stevenage, and we're naming an unchanged side from the team that beat Wickham earlier in the episode. Same team instructions, same mentality, same team shape. So let's get into the game, and hopefully we can get a similar, if not better, result and try and push our way back into the automatic promotion spot. Hopefully we can, uh, like I say, get a decent result here and uh, push our way back in to, to third, maybe even second. Lacey with a very early shot, 12 seconds in, that was only just wide. So we've got Leighton Orient are playing Yeovil. Cheltenham, I don't know who they're playing. Bar with the ball in the penalty area and forces a save out of the Stevenage keeper. Cox with the ball back in, and this time Barr has put us 1-0 up, six minutes into the game. And I've just realised that uh, Stevenage were down to 10 men at that point. I don't care. We, uh, we've we scored. We're 1-0 up. I don't know where that leaves us in terms of the league. It sees us go up to third because Leighton Orient haven't uh, done anything in their game yet. Grimsby are beating Oldham as well, which uh, is good. But just as I say that, Lacey has got himself injured. What sort of injury is it? Potential foot injury. So we're going to bring him off. We're going to bring on Martel Taylor Crossdale, see if he can uh, do anything for us in this game. We're going to play him in his preferred role as an advanced forward on attack just to get the most out of him that we possibly can. Uh, who are Cheltenham playing? We've got another highlight. Barr heading it down to Evandro. Taylor Crossdale through to Barr and uh, straight at the keeper. But we've got another highlight straight away. We've lost out though. Ioma with the header and it looks like it's going to be a highlight for Stevenage and they have equalised. The player that went off injured while uh, we were scoring a goal, has scored a goal while Taylor Crossdale is down injured at the far end that you can see right in the background. I hope he hasn't uh, got a an injury that needs him to come off because that's a bruised knee, he can stay on with a bruised knee. Right, we'll have a look where Cheltenham are, what they're doing, who they're playing. Cheltenham are playing Lincoln, so if they can... Uh, if Lincoln can do us a favour, the same way that Grimsby are doing us a favour by beating Oldham, and we can, um, if we can get the win, that means we'll only be, that push up, us up to 50, 58 points, so we'll be three points behind Oldham, and only one point behind Cheltenham. But as things stand, we are still in the automatic promotion spots, because I believe Leighton Orient are losing. Leighton Orient are playing Yeovil, I believe, if I remember rightly. I can't find it anywhere. Where is it? Ah, there it is. Yeah, Yeovil 1 0 up against Leighton Orient. So that leaves us in an automatic promotion spot. I do still want to challenge for the league. 
if we can, but a uh, automatic promotion spot would be fantastic. We defended well there at the start of the second half. Cheltenham must be winning in their game because Oldham have dropped to second. How would Cheltenham do it? They must be ahead. They are. They're 2-0 up against Lincoln. But that means we're only five points off of uh, Cheltenham and Oldham who are... Oh, we've got another injury. O'Connor. What's he got? What's wrong with him? A potential foot injury. Right, OK. Who are we going to bring on for him? We're going to bring on... We're going to bring on Sam Matthews for him to make a rare appearance for us. The Carolero, really. Uh, Matthews, what's he want to be? A deep line playmaker on defend. He could be a deep line playmaker on support. And then we'll change Evandro to the Engatri on attack. See if that can give us a bit more attacking emphasis going forward. Matthews hasn't played for us for a long while and he's trying to force his way out of the club because he's not getting first team football. But if O'Connor's going to be out for a while, I know Yearwood has just recently come back to uh, has come back from injury, but he's not fit enough for the bench just yet. Hopefully, by the time we play our next game, he'll be fit enough to start, which means he can then replace O'Connor, and we can leave Matthews on the bench. I'm hoping that Lacey's not out for a long while because Adi Owen isn't in any sort of form. Taylor Crossdale hasn't played football at all this year, so. He's not uh, in any sort of form either. And we're 81 minutes in and we're still at one all. And we're going to pump the ball into the box. We're going to go route one. We're going to close down more. And we're going to play a much higher tempo. We're going to go on to attacking. And we're going to get stuck in. And then once those changes have been made, I will make a substitute. A substitute? A substitution, even. <clears throat> right, OK. So Humphrey's not having a very good game and he's on a yellow card. But Ioma is knackered. I'm going to bring off Humphreys. I can't risk going down to 10 men. We're going to bring Barkworth on for him. And we'll change him onto his preferred role as a ball-playing defender on defend. And that will be our last substitution of today. Hopefully we can get a winning goal or not concede a goal. We've just conceded. We're 2-1 down against Stevenage. Are we really going to lose the game that we were favourites for and win the game that we weren't? I'm not even going to watch their replay. I want to get straight back into it. We're going to go on to overload now. We need to push for an equaliser. We look completely knackered, but to be fair, so do they. We're into stoppage time now. We've got five minutes of added time, but we're going and motoring straight through it. This will be the last highlight, I believe. Matthews with the ball to Cox, and that's it. We have lost Stevenage, so just the one win in today's episode. But from the looks of things, we are back in the automatic promotion spots. We are only, well, we'll be six points behind both Cheltenham and Oldham if the game stayed the same way they were. And we play Grimsby next, who beat, have just beaten Oldham last I saw. I will confirm that. Cheltenham beat Lincoln 2-0. We lost to Stevenage. Leighton Orient lost 4-0 to Yeovil. Oldham came back into it and beat Grimsby 2-1. So, And we're not in the automatic promotion spots. Oh, everything I thought that had happened has not happened. Right, so we're just one point behind Leighton Orient now. We're, we're nine points behind Oldham still. And we've got 13 games to go. 12, 13 games left. Oh, and the last two games of the season at Cheltenham and Oldham, that could be, that's going to be a fantastic last episode if we stay where we are, and hopefully we can uh, have a chance of winning the league by then. But I think we're going to come back for, we're going to come back for the Yeovil game. We'll play Yeovil and Notts County in the next game. So we'll play all these behind the scenes. We'll come back for Yeovil and Notts County. If you like that, please give it a big thumbs up. Smash that like button, please. Subscribe for more Football Manager 18 content. Remember, follow me on Facebook and Twitter at WeaselGamerTV for both of those. And thank you very much for watching.